Okay, I know this is going to freak some of you out. It's not Sunday. It's not 9 p.m. on the East Coast, but we are going live with Shop Talk. This is a makeup show since we were traveling on our way back from the cross-country motorcycle chase, and I hope we're not disturbing too much of your schedule through the week. We had such an awesome time in the Ozarks learning all the secrets the chase organizers had for us. But man, it was just exhausting. I can't imagine how the riders felt getting out of there. Amazing stories, amazing scenery, just a really, really good time. We're going to talk about that tonight with Ari from Law Tigers. Adam Sandoval is on with us. We want to get his impressions. First time out on an adventure like the chase. And uh, lots of news coming up. Sturgis stuff is breathing down our throat, hot and heavy. All kind of good stuff coming up with Shop Talk in just four minutes. Do your part, hit the like and share button, help us get this out all over the two-wheeled universe. Shop Talk going live. Four minutes. I want to give a shout out to some more usual suspects. Mike Draco crossed the line first tonight. Joseph Ferry in the house. Good to see you here, man. One of our good friends. Now now good friends from the chase. One man in the house. Got some got some smokies rolling, I think. He, he sends out a hello, cool breeze. Always interesting messages from that man. Karen Andrea. Hoping you would all do this. We got a killer, killer video from the chase tonight, too. You guys might be able to talk me into doing two of them. We'll see. But, man, this Wednesday is going to be the full recap of the chase on the Motorcycle Cannonball Chronicles. You don't want to miss that. We got all of the stuff that we collected throughout the week ready to roll on that show. But we have a little bit tonight. We're going we're gonna to tease you a little bit tonight and then come back on Wednesday and smack you in the face with all that chase goodness for now we're waiting we're doing the countdown with shop talk shop talk makeup show since we missed sunday hope you guys don't mind too much two and a half minutes and we're going live with this one Tim Jalay in the house with us. That's my man with the mini bikes doing us mad props out in uh, Gettysburg this weekend too. Mary Butts, Team Butts joining us this evening. Very good. Tim Jalay, Jive Turkey Racing. It's always good to have you guys along on the ride with us. Shop Talk, if you don't know, is 90 to 120 minutes of all the bullshit we can fit. Some news, some entertainment, some information. And uh, usually we try to get the job done. Todd Cameron, can I get an amen? Let me see. Can I get an amen? I don't, damn it, I lost the button. Todd, I'm just going to have to give you a simple amen manually. Amen. <laughs> one minute, one minute we're going live with Shop Talk. Stick around. Okay, as we hit the final 10, 9, 8, let's get this one out of the station, up onto the tracks. It's time to go live with this week's installment of Shop Talk. Here we go.
aka Scooter Tramps and Chopper Duckies all across the land. It is not Sunday, it's not 9 p.m., but we're here live with Shop Talk. I'm Chris Callen with Cycle Source Magazine. Welcome to America's favorite motorcycle news program. Uh, brought to you tonight by Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studios, live 50 floors beneath the street level here at Source Media Headquarters. Um, so much to get through tonight, it's going to be incredible. I'm joined by my crew. What's up, everybody? Howdy, howdy. Oh, look how good Mark looks tonight. <laughs> so if you guys haven't watched the show before and you're not familiar with what's going on over there, Mark had uh, some, some stuff to take care of and sitting in his place is his stand-in. This is Mark's body double. and uh, <laughs> He looks like he might have shaved a little bit, he though. He never really has that much to say, so I'm not sure. So fresh back from the chase. Sunburn, oh. authentic, tired eyes authentic man what do you think man we have so much amazing stuff i have to say first of all todd cameron is here i want to get this out of the way congratulations you're number two for the chase you you came in first place you're amazing we all should bow to you only because you're just a little bit smarter than doug by four points (laughs) Oh, man, are you going to piss Doug off with that one? I love you, Doug. (laughs) Oh, but listen, if you guys aren't, you don't know what the motorcycle chase is. A cross-country motorcycle chase is an endurance race um, timed, and it's based on uh, partially on the quiz and riders' ability to navigate. Yeah, and just a, a really, really incredible event. It was born out of the idea of the cannonball which I'm sure most of you are familiar. This one's a different uh, animal in the fact that they start with motorcycles are from 1930 to 1960. 1960. Um, There's no teams allowed. You can't have a chase vehicle. You can't have like a whole tool truck and mechanics. Everything you need for the 1300 miles has to be packed on your motorcycle, your tools, your clothes, your toiletries. And it's all up to you and a little roll chart to make sure, and your knowledge to make sure you get where you need to go. Yeah, and it, it makes it it makes it interesting too, as we saw as the days go on. You know, these guys are clocking about 300 miles in the Ozarks a day through this through this particular event. And as the days go on, the motorcycles start to show signs of it. Oh my God! And the Ozarks. If you have never ridden in the Ozarks, holy cow! like some of the best riding I've ever had the pleasure of doing. And we had the fortunate, I guess we were fortunate (laughs) enough because we were filming, we were on an ultra classic. There was a a gentleman there who was on a 1931 BMW. Oh my God. Let me tell you. Oh my God. I have so much respect for that man. Greg Allen, Greg Allen. Props to Greg Allen because you really got to love a motorcycle. There was times for him to ride that motorcycle. He was under 30 miles an hour going up. Seven. His lowest yeah. seven miles an hour uphill. And and the hills in, in the Ozarks, we're talking hills that are like 10 miles long. It's 10 well, miles to climb a hill. And, and there were a couple. Mount Magazine, what elevation of around 2,500 feet. We started out at 500 mm-hmm. feet and ascended to 2,500 feet or thereabouts. Yeah. Well, and he made it. Let's not let the cat entirely out of the bag because we have two great guests that are going to come on and talk about the chase. We're very excited about it, obviously, but um, plenty, plenty more. We got tons of pictures and some video and everything else. Uh, Like I said to you in the beginning, if you're not aware of what Shop Talk is, this is your first time tuning in. Welcome. We appreciate you guys coming in. Typically, we do this show every Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio. And uh, what is Shop Talk? 90 to 120 minutes of all the bullshit we can fit. Some entertainment. We do some interviews with people throughout the motorcycle industry. We start the whole thing off with a little segment we call the news. First up in the news this evening, and I think this is in the spirit of Richard Branson ushering in the era of public space travel, uh, Royal Enfield Meteor 350 enables you to get out of your orbit with state-of-the-art feature, Tripper Navigation. The era of exploration through digital maps, it might seem odd that current navigation system in most motorcycles still rely on manual methods. Often riders have to purchase a third-party GPS accessory just to have that guidance on the dashboard. In some cases, riders can only set the navigation on their smartphone, so either they have to stick 
the phone on the dashboard or stop sideways just to see if they're on the right track. Royal Enfield has offered a unique solution for all riders. The Royal yeah. Enfield Tripper. And I have to give, again, I have to give Royal Enfield credit. They are coming out swinging with these entry level motorcycles that have, Form, you know, the functionality, bell, yeah. more bells and whistles Absolutely. than you would expect on that price point. Absolutely. And, you know, so, and just, just more proof, further proof that they're, they're listening to the customer base. They're paying attention to what people want. You know, if you really, you really think about the youth demographic and reaching out to the youth demographic, you're going to want not just affordability, but you're going to want a product that's going to last a long time and that people are going to commute on. That's going to incorporate all these things that we're talking about lately. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Next up in the news, and this comes in from The Sun. Women ride motorcycles from all over U.S. to Lake George for rally. Uh, Chris Simmons hipped us to this event a while back on Coast to Coast, but it's on. Hundreds of decked-out touring motorcycles cruising through Lake George this week as the Women on Wheels organization holds their 35th annual ride-in rally in the village. As of July 12, 300 or more female motorcyclists hailing from all over the nation were expected to attend the three-day rally, which offers female two-wheeled touring enthusiasts, recreation education, mutual sport and recognition, Women on Wheels President Carol Scala said. So you can check them more of that out in the link that Heather is providing. It's already up there if you want to read more about that. If you want to read more about any of these articles in depth, all the links will be in your comment section. So just click away See after how, the show. See how just good saying. she does that. That's officially my Robin Quivers. Oh Still my don't God. know who she is. That makes, that makes Mark as the teddy bear Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be so mad. All right, listen, let's take a break from the news because um, I want to get back to the chase and I want to make sure we get our guests on here fast. We have tonight for you R11 Bomb from Law Tigers, who was a big part of helping the chase go off this year, and Adam Sandoval, who you guys all know from his incredible YouTube and, and social media posting on living on a motorcycle. And this was Adam's first time on the chase, and we want to get to him and see what his personal account was and how he felt about the event. So let's cut to the interviews. What's up, fellas? Not much. What's going on, Chris? What's up, Heather? Hey, guys. So, the chase, huh? <laughs> First, real quick before I forget, Ari, I have to tell you how impressed I was with your representatives out on the road throughout the Ozarks. They were so incredible and helped everyone oh, yeah. and were always there when anyone needed anything. I was beyond impressed. So, kudos to you for putting together such a good team. Thank you. That means a lot. And I know those guys would really appreciate it. Shout out to Malcolm, uh, who's our Missouri marketing manager, Madison, who is our Arkansas marketing manager. And of course, Josh, who are, is our uh, Oklahoma marketing manager. All of them took time out of their schedule to come hang out, give out some waters, lip balm, you know, sunglass cleaners, and just hang out and uh, support the riders. And, and uh, I know they helped you guys out a bit. Uh, and I really appreciate it. We couldn't do what we do without those guys. And I know Adam works with all of them also and, and would say the same. So thank you for, for recognizing those guys. They do all the heavy lifting. Well, and you know, it's it's important to say because a lot of people might see the, the, the blow up tiger head and think that, you know, a lot of this is about a marketing opportunity. But, you know, we kind of say all the time that you guys are, you know, there obviously when, when people need you, but also when they don't. And that, that really rang true because I saw some of your guys helping push start motorcycles. I saw when it started pouring rain on a couple different occasions, not only did they load up everything that was Law Tiger branded, they helped everybody out, you know, and I think that's the, that's the kind of community attitude to talk about. We appreciate that. Yeah, I actually pushed I pushed one of them. I was a little bit winded afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy push starting a 70 year old motorcycle. I think Adam captured it on on film and he did the same. Adam pushed some bikes, too. But uh, and then we were helping Jason load up the, the, the magazines. You guys did a beautiful job producing that we advertised in. So I think we saved about 5000 magazines. Oh, thank stuff. goodness. Yeah. Uh, so that's what it's all about, you know. Yeah, you know, we we are a for-profit business, and we help uninjured riders, but we're so much more than that. And you know, the chase is really not a commercial endeavor for us. Uh, it's not something that we plan on or expect to get business from. It's really about supporting the community and giving back, and 
doing something cool to memorialize and recognize motorcycle history and these amazing people and really being part of their story and experience. Uh, uh, for me, it's, it's just about doing that, paying it forward and being, being part of the community. And not everything we do has to be, you know, tied to profit or, or to personal gain, uh, especially when it comes to this, this, this industry, it's a lot about just helping each other out and, and be experiencing it. I was there for a week, uh, as was Adam and Adam was there longer than me. I was there about five days, but, uh, it was incredible. Just an incredible no, experience. That's, that's outstanding. Now, Adam, how much experience do you have with antique and vintage motorcycles? I have about one week's experience now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, there's, I think it was maybe Friday when we were in Mountain Home. Jason Sims let you ride, I think, his WL. And you came around that corner with the biggest, excuse my language, shit eaten grin I think I have <laughs> just about ever seen on anybody's face. You looked like a little kid that said he could have anything in the toy store. You know, it, it felt like that. That's that's funny. I just put out a YouTube video today on riding that bike. And uh, it, it, and that's exactly what I said in the video. I said, I feel like I'm a little kid again who got his first mini bike. And, you know, my mom said, yeah, you can ride it, but just up and down the driveway. And so, <laughs> you know, that's how I felt. It was, uh, it was a unique experience, you know, and that bike that he let me ride was uh, actually commissioned. It actually was in World War II. So, you know, that's the same war both my granddads fought in. Oh, uh, right on. It was, so for me to ride my first vintage motorcycle with a foot clutch and a, and a, and a jockey shifter on the tank, um, and it being an act war bike, uh, it just, it meant a lot, man. It was, it was an extraordinary experience. Right on. I, I have one of those bikes, actually. I have that same WL45, and I've ridden around my block. I'm not brave enough as of yet to, to venture onto the chase. This was kind of my first foray to see if it was something I could do and would do. But I'll tell you, people don't realize just how difficult those bikes are to start, to ride, to handle. It's not like a, 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 a modern motorcycle in any way, shape, or form. Suicide shift brakes don't work like new bikes the bike's not as stable i mean not as powerful it, it's truly a, a a different experience even for someone like me who's grown up on bikes uh but that's what makes it so cool it's 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 not something you're used to well adam listen as we um as we ask you some more questions about your first impressions of the chase my lovely wife was nice enough to uh to, Rob to your Instagram. Pil pilfer your Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> She's shameless about it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw pictures just as we talk. But you know, t tell us because you've been you've been all all over the country. You've been to you know a million different events and tell us the the impressions that you have about this event and these people that were different. You know, uh, first I have to say the event was was extremely well organized. Um, I got to give credit to that. Uh, you know, I, I, you like to think about, could you do an event like that? And one of the things I never had to think about was, uh, was it too much of a mess for me to do, which can be the case with events. And uh, it was not here. These, these guys uh, and ladies really put together a, a wonderfully organized and orchestrated event. So that, that was uh, probably one of the, the first things I took away from it. And then, uh, you know, I would say probably the, the next coolest thing was the camaraderie. You know, these guys and girls and dogs, as you see on the screen right now, uh, <laughs> they they came together to help one another. And, uh, you know, they were all about making sure their fellow riders made it down the road. Now, they uh, they did indeed make sure their bikes were fixed first because nobody's got parts crews, as you said earlier. Um, nobody's got a mechanics team. So, you know, and it is a competition. So, you know, they, they'd make sure their own bikes are running first from what I saw. But after that, they were always eager to help somebody else. I mean, I even watched a guy completely tear down and rebuild uh, an engine in a parking garage outside of a hotel at night. I mean, had the jugs off, everything. Was rebuilding the engine. Yep. Yep. That was the, the, the human to that dog, actually. That was Barry Wardlaw. Yep. Um, Unbelievable. Did that. And he finished. He, he crossed the finish line with everybody else on Saturday. And despite he actually had some other setbacks as well throughout the week. But, man, yeah, but like just, the perseverance and determination yeah. with these people 
was was very humbling to watch. And and you talk about community too, because at the same time, there was the kid with the the shop. He he ended up bringing parts up to that same parking garage for Java seven cycles. Seven other motorcycles. He helped seven other motorcycles, including taking once he came up with the parts for six. He took the seventh guy's kicker pedal back to his shop and welded it, and then showed back up with his entire family. Spent the rest of the night there working on Barry's bike. Unbelievable. That was, was Unbe- incredible. And that, you know, that's the community we're, we're used to seeing in the motorcycle world, at least myself, my experience. Um, you know, it's always been a very giving and caring um, and, and a community that always there to help one another, a lot of times in charitable ways. Uh, but for these people uh, to sit there and repair each other's motorcycles, I think they all have a mutual respect, right? How can you not? No, they, they really understand that this is first and foremost all about the motorcycle. You know, I mean, yeah. that, that, that was the thing. The motorcycle is the rock star. It, it really Actually, was. You know, go ahead. I almost have to disagree with you on that. I think in the <laughs> over the course of the week, it was the family that you got that was the rock star and the friendships that you made. That's what I think a lot of people really came away with because there were people that were actually, hey, I have a spare coil. Hey, I have a spare generator. You need it. You can have it. But I, th- I think a lot of that happens because, you know, we've seen since we were kids, we've seen pictures of these motorcycles. We've seen them in museums. We've seen, you know, like they're, they've, they've been cherished and coveted. And when you actually see a group of a hundred of them going down the road, it's such a special thing that people want to do anything they can to keep that going. I saw by the end of this event, I saw like a, a, a real serious state of depression start to come over everybody because they realized that it was coming to an end and not because they hadn't had enough riding or a physical abuse or mental abuse. They were seriously bummed because this, this was a special thing, man. Hey, Chris, talking about going down the street, we had this really amazing story where there was a guy that uh, was working in his shop and had heard that the chase was coming through town literally heard a motorcycle and was able to identify it as his father's motorcycle that yes. had been sold like four or five years earlier. His father, I think it's since passed away. Uh, and, uh, and he saw it driving down the road as, as uh, he looked up and then they came back together. This is young kid that was sponsored that was riding it. And Adam and I got a chance to talk and interview both of them. But the guy was teary eyed, the son who had, uh, found this, this bike, uh, that, uh, his father had sold and, and it was just a bonding experience that the the kid who was being sponsored uh uh had with with the other guy whose father had sold the bike and and uh several years earlier and just the emotion it evoked and and the story that it shared and the coincidence was was just a special special thing to experience I, yeah and actually max is watching right now max was one of the the sweepstakes winners i guess for lack of a better term he um won an opportunity to be sponsored and he was riding a moto guzzi falcone if i said that that's, right that's the actual bike that we're that that's he's the talking actual about. bike yep. and um what what i mean not only would an experience for max to be able to ride that bike and have that opportunity but then to meet the original owner's wife and and, and so, have a picture yeah. with her sitting on it and like I can't imagine how how that must have made him feel, and and the wife and son. And anybody that's because he interested, bought it brand new. Anybody that's interested, um, Michael Lichter actually did a full interview that's going to be on Dennis Kirk. You guys can check that out because it was it was an incredible story. It sent it sent chills down my spine. It really did. So, yeah, the the chase the chase. It's it's funny how there's this evolution of emotion. Did you did you see that, Adam? Did you see? You know, early on, guys, they're they're kind of aggressive. They want to get going. They want to get they want to get their miles in. You know, and and everything's really like at the surface. And then by the end, man, everyone's in love with each other. And it was a completely different thing. It was crazy. Those you know, those men and women uh, went to battle together. I mean, they they did. They were out there in in you know ninety plus degree weather with you know ninety plus percent humidity uh, underneath boiling hot bikes and working on them and, and, and wrenching on them and helping one another. And nobody wanted anybody else to fail. Everybody wanted to see everybody make it every mile. And, and I think you're hundred percent correct that by the end, when you share that much passion with somebody uh, in the end, there's a, there's a level of emotion that, that is very apparent. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, watching Jason Sims, and not just Jason Sims, a lot of the participants, after they cross that finish line, literally start to break down with emotion. Because, I mean, and I'm sure it was a complex emotions of exhaustion and excitement and overcoming that challenge um but it was it was quite a phenomenon to see to watch that happen and now being there versus hearing about it is very very different you know yeah. I, I, before i went i was like oh you know what i could probably do this and you know what's what's so hard the bikes are going 30 40 miles an hour and they're a couple hundred miles a day and but once you're out there and i was with adam for three or four of the days yeah, uh, capturing video. I, I took over as his driver for a few days, actually, and he's hanging and out the window, and and uh, it was crazy. But but just to see what these people endure, and man, I got out of the car and I was dying from from heat from the from the humidity and the heat. But uh, it's 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 something that unless you're actually there, experiencing it, you can't fully appreciate not only the the endurance these guys go through and, and the toils, but also the beauty of the bikes cruising down the road in these you know, these trees and lakes and barns and the Ozarks is just beautiful. I encourage anyone that hasn't been part of it to, to, to do so, whether it's the cannonball coming up this year or the chase next year. So that the bike that I have the picture up there right now, that's the motorcycle that you got to Jason, Jason taught you to get that thing started and you got to take it for a ride. Yeah, I, I did. And that is it right there. The double zero there. Uh, and it is, uh, I mean, it's, and it's, you know, he's got that motor built up, so it, it moves pretty good, but, uh, you know, just the, the amount of steps it takes to, in Ari touched on this earlier, but just the amount of steps it takes to start a motorcycle like that is really, uh, yep. it's really amazing. I mean, it's, 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 you just can't explain it. Right. Am I right? Yeah. A lot of, a lot of people don't understand that motorcycles in their infancy, you know, they were, they were built by guys that were, that were engineers and like serious mechanics, you know? So it, it kind of took that person to operate one, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't as friendly as they are now, man. They, they weren't talking about the precise seat height to get the most amount of riders on. <laughs> <laughs> That's you for know. sure. That's funny. That's now, awesome. So, Adam, are you going to be on the lookout for an antique or vintage bike so you can do the chase in 2022? I think I am. I, I really am. I mean, if yes. I had the right... I, so, I, I would... Yeah, I think Chris and I, providing that we can work it out with our dates, we're actually talking about doing it on our 49 pan head chopper. Two up. How cool. How cool. Nice. So, very very how you guys gonna i may regret walk? that but <laughs> what'd you say uh, are you gonna have a camera heather you're gonna be carrying a camera on the back while chris is driving or what of course of course <laughs> she, does, she does normally we do all right that that 49 is nice and easy and and the gentleman that you said that um that was building the motor in the garage rebuilding the motor that's our motor guy so he has he has the motor for that 49 right now and if if anybody's going to put it together so that we can do that, it'd definitely be Barry Wardlaw. How cool! Well, listen, I'll I, be rooting for you. Will you guys will you guys stick with us for for just five minutes? I actually I have a bunch of people asking for more videos and pictures and everything else, and we have our our daily video. We produced a daily video for the event throughout the week, and we have our daily video from day one. It hasn't been seen by anyone yet because it took us a minute to actually figure out how to do all this and, and keep it on schedule. So we didn't get day one finished until we got back here. But we want to play that and then come back and talk to you a little bit more about some different stuff. Will you stick with us? Sure. All right, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. We'll be right yeah. back. This is this is all about the chase. Tonight's all about the chase. Let's check it out.
Okay, I just want to remind you guys, if you didn't hear it at the beginning of the uh, show, we are doing all of the recaps, all of the daily videos on this week's um, Motorcycle Cannibal Chronicles, which happens Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern. So if you didn't get a chance to see those throughout the week, um, we're going to roll all of them back to back. There's a uh, you know, special recap from Jason, and, and Rob's going to be commenting everything, but stay tuned for that on Wednesday. So that's that's where we're at with that one, fellas. Very cool. Nice. Beautiful shots. Oh, and yeah, it's just a neat event. You know, they got they got better as the week went on because we started to understand what the event was, and you know, really started to get the points of interest. And you know, it, it takes a minute to adjust. I mean, I I rode the first ever Hokahe, and this was different enough for me. That I was like, I went through shock the first day and was like, "Whoa!" I had to get my, I had to get my tempo, you know. I don't think people realize, and Adam and I were talking about this. There's no GPS. Like same thing with us. Like Jason, who's the promoter. Uh, shout out to Jason, by the way. Uh, kudos on a great event. Produces with his team this long piece of paper that's like 15 feet in length, and uh, and it I'm, has. I'm gonna on see it, if I every, can find one. Yeah, you got to show people this because it's not. I mean, the directions are crazy, and Jason kind of does this on purpose to throw people off. I think that's his his uh, his little sarcastic, sneaky side. Uh, but uh, but it literally, it's just like it shows each direction. There it is, right there. And Adam and I were in the car, and we got lost a few times, and we had a, a list of things. And in this mini chase that Jason put together, which is half the length of the normal one, he didn't tell anybody the destination. I mean, nope. he, I knew, uh, but I was only one of a couple people that knew. So um, we, we were don't, working don't media have, and we didn't know they wouldn't tell right, us so, from day to day. And I did not. My guys had to know because they were setting up. And we had to schedule where they were going to be. But it was like hush hush. Right. We were trying to schedule radio uh, interviews and we, we couldn't tell anybody what was going on. But literally it's this guy. These guys have this thing on their bikes and they're turning it manually each stop. And they're and these are like back roads and in the middle of nowhere. And if you miss like one turn and some of them are confusing like adam what was that remember we got lost we had to like make four or five adjustments on that one turn because it was all the same interstate right what was that all about yeah i don't you know it, you're 100 percent right and just so you guys know i also did not get the end destinations i had to figure it out every, every day too i wasn't i was the only one here on this channel that got to get uh get the get the privileged information so i was with y'all on this and uh yeah there was just sometimes they're just very confusing and and you've got you know there's one section where the same road 60 ran east and west and north and south all were labeled 60 on, <laughs> on the map and i mean yeah it's just and then it was w oh and it was it was and then you took a right on a w well, highway w was 60 east and you know so it looked like 60 west because the w i mean it's just it could be very and, and it took us probably 15 20 minutes just right. to get back out and we had three people in a car right. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we almost gave these three riders that were on the chase the wrong directions. They're like we stopped. Did. and They're like, do we go right? They're looking at the stop sign. Do we go right or left? And we went left, which was the wrong way. Luckily, yeah. they went right and didn't listen to us, or we would have thrown them <laughs> off. But uh, we were like, follow us. We got yeah. it figured out. No, <laughs> right, right. right yeah. but, uh, but it's great. I mean, it's just so weird. I mean, and these are again each day is like a 15 foot sheet with probably like 40 or 50 turns oh yeah and, and that's by design so uh, yeah you got to be really vigilant and you got to really pay attention uh to what you're yeah. doing and i'm yeah. not and i'm a directionally challenged as it is so i don't think adam's much better to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't that <laughs> anyway oh we Chris, get, did you we... go... sorry go ahead adam oh i was just gonna say we get so reliant on gps's yeah. you know you right. get some paper Oh my god yeah no absolutely absolutely and i i think i think that's part of what you know part of what makes this a, a, a special and great event too because for from every part of it you know not having not having support not having an idea where you're going not having you know today's conventional direction machine you know and really like even this this thing going going back to beyond the map even you know what I mean, and and just having having your own direction sheet and left to interpretation, that's awesome. Yeah. It's also it's also slow. Like these guys, like you guys mentioned, are going 10, 20 miles an hour uphill, 30, 40 miles an hour on straightaways, and so, and we were doing the same, and it forces you to really 
you know, kind of kind of look at things differently. You know, usually, you know, we're zooming down the street on our motorcycles, you know, 70, 80, sometimes faster than that. Uh, and you're really not appreciating or seeing what's going by you. Uh, and, and under these circumstances, you really get to take in so much more the beauty of nature. And like I said, the bridges and the amazing cabins and lakes and, and just greenery because you're forced to slow down. And that's what I think uh, these guys could really uh, attest to and why they enjoy it is because everything is really slowed down by about 50 <laughs> percent just based on the bike speed. So some of the some of the chase riders are chiming in. Joe Ferry says I was going faster than that, and I'll sure. I'll defend some of these guys. So there's three classes, right? And in the three classes, class one goes out first, and they're they're the guys with the smallest displacement. You know, they have the largest handicap. They they let them get out early because they're the guys that are going slow up the hills. I'm I think not, it's under 50 cc for the first class. Yeah, there you go. Under I'm, 250. I'm not sure what class Tom Banks was in with his. He must have been like class twelve because yeah. he went eighty five miles an hour. I was literally having, I was having a hard time hour. keeping up to Tom. So they they weren't all going slow. Tom was Tom was hauling ass. <laughs> There's a picture of Tom's bike in there and he had I'm gonna give a shout out to his engine builder because Mike Silvio, you absolutely knocked it out of the park yep. on Tom Banks motor. Because I'll tell you what, he was seriously going eighty five miles an hour. And we know that because we had a speedometer and we were we were running with him. Yeah. <laughs> what was he riding? Crazy. What was he at? What was he? What was he riding? I, it uh, was. Let me, it's a white bike in the in the folder, Chris. Let me get the actual year. I'll pull it up real quick. One sec. Because like my what? dream bike is a Bruff Superior, which which are a, an absolute fortune. Uh, I don't know oh, if I yeah. need one, but I know those bikes can do like, in, you know, 80, 80 plus miles an hour. Uh, that's what they're known for, but. I didn't, I didn't, you know, we were, we were in the back, like Adam and I were in a vehicle in the back. In fact, we, had, we got passed a few times, uh, um, just because the riders obviously wanted to get by us and we were trying to get angles from left, right, front, back. Amazing. Dr Adam got some amazing drone footage. So I that think, could have been the case also. He we was, I think Tom was on a 1936 VLH. Okay. That's uh, it, wow. right? I, yes, I don't think. It. 80 miles an hour on a 1936 i mean <laughs> you put the power to the engine but my god i mean kudos to him for having the grit to be able to ride a bike like that uh with that much power and, and that speed because so i mean adam i i have to tell you we were on the ultra riding with tom and i was sitting backwards filming and <laughs> they were going so fast at one point i looked at them i said are you racing tom banks and again i'm backwards on the motorcycle <laughs> And he says, I might be. And I said, just because you're kind both of. from Pittsburgh doesn't mean you have to win. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm like, this is the day. <laughs> what's it like? Because I know Michael Lichter, who I finally had the chance to really talk to, and I know Adam did too. I've known him for years, and I, he, he's a legend when it comes to, to uh, you know, photographing bikes. And and uh, I know he's, he's spent more miles backwards than anyone else, but what's it like how they're being backwards on a motorcycle? I couldn't even imagine. Honestly, it's kind of boring. <laughs> really? Like, see, I mean, I'm not being a, I'm not being a smartass. It's kind of boring. Everything looks a lot slower when it's, yeah, when it's like, backwards. I don't know what it not, is. I mean, if somebody's behind you at the time, somebody's behind you, it's great because you're, you're watching them ride and you're watching them th flow through the curves and, you know, and they're all great. They're making funny faces at me and sticking their tongue out and stuff like that. But when there's nobody behind you, I was like, eh, I'm ready to turn around and see what's coming, you know. Sure. Um, That's crazy. But hey, you guys also I'll give a shout out to you guys. I don't think people realize just how much work you all do. I know we didn't have a chance to spend a lot of time just socializing because you guys were in work mode literally every time I saw you. So I, I, I personally want to thank you for everything you guys did because, man, you guys are up early. You're filming all day. You're editing doing shows like this and so uh you know thank you for everything that you do to support oh, thank you Ari. in our industry in general i know we're gonna be working together on torque and some other cool things and it's just i'm proud to be able to have uh friends and partners like you guys that are so dedicated and really hands-on uh that's that's amazing thank you thank you that's it. very much appreciated more than you know so um, let's uh, let's let's switch gears. As much as I don't want to get off of the the chase stuff, we have some other things to talk about. Um, primarily, 
um, in in order of succession, Sturgis is just around the corner, and um, you guys have a killer, killer thing going on with, with Paul Yaffe and Sturgis and a whole package of a, an awesome giveaway. Yeah, yeah, we have – shout out to Paul. Uh, hopefully – he just texted me. He's, I think he's working on the bike right now. I told him to tune in. We'll see if he makes it or not. But, but yeah, Paul and I got together. Uh, he built my bike last year and said did such an incredible job. I'm like, hey – let's uh let's do something cool and take it another level and every year we do style and sturgis and this year we decided to to take it up the next notch and and give away a, a paul yaffe original That's and uh awesome. bike's gonna be worth probably nine i thought initially it'd be like eighty five thousand, but quite honestly based on all the parts we put on or he's put on and red donated by guys like nick trask trask performance curtis hoffman hoffman designs king of carbon fiber trask king with turbos amazing racing components also, um, ODC Suspension, who Paul's a North American dealer for, uh, JC, Rolling Out Custom Paint. I mean, these guys together uh, contributed to a bike that's probably well worth over $95,000. And, I mean, it is the most badass bike I've ever seen. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have a finished photo and video to share with everyone because our contest is coming up and uh, we're drawing a winner on uh, on the, fi- the evening of the 15th, which is literally three days away. But but yeah, incredible, incredible contest, and I want to thank those guys for doing it. You go to styleandsurgis.com for your chance to win. Pretty easy, styleandsurgis.com. And we also have amazing second and third place prizes from Fat Scooter, Rockford Fosgate. Uh, um, I mean, it, the list goes on. Uh, uh, man, there's so many people. That J- Scott and Alexa Jacobs artwork. Uh, Hot Leathers, who's a friend of yours, they give yeah. us a shopping spree. Uh, Night Rider Jewelry, I think I mentioned them. Uh, Magnum Research, 44 and Magnum 50 caliber gun. Glencoe campsites, and and uh, and uh, um, they're also giving us a uh, a cabin. I mean, it just the list goes on, and and it's over 120,000 in prizes. Uh, so if you have a, if you haven't had a chance to sign up, please do. And actually. Uh, icing on the cake, Adam actually announced it. Adam, what are you going to be doing uh, besides you're giving away prizes every week? What's the little special uh, add-on bonus? Want to share it? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go down. I'll be in Sturgis obviously this year, and I will go and uh, take the winners out to uh, lunch. We're gonna take the strip together, check out bikes, and just hang out, uh, film a video, put them in a YouTube video, and uh, take them to a nice lunch, and uh, you know, do the strip. Which you know, if if you've All never right. been to Sturgis. Is an iconic thing you just you just absolutely have to do. Um, you know, I, I will say one thing about this contest, Ari. I've been you know following you in this contest. I've been involved with it for a couple of years now, and you know, as a rider, I always hear of all these different contests and bike giveaways and auctions and this and that, and and you, you always have like this little bit of hesitation, like ah, uh, there's some sort of you know something. But every year I've been in Sturgis. Every year you've held this competition. Every year I've met people that y'all have brought out to Sturgis for 100% expense paid, taking home guns and, and all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, this is something where it really costs you absolutely nothing. All you got to do is just sign up and, and, and you, you're entered to win. And, so, and somebody does win in, like you said, just a few days. So uh, just, just super cool. And I just wanted to give my seal of endorsement on that because it is a genuine, real thing that <laughs> every year. Oh, right. I thought it was no, that's not a 50 cal, but I, I think that was a shotgun, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's yeah. ridiculously easy to enter. I actually did it just now in less than two seconds. Um, yeah. I, did, I did throw the link up there. Everybody, again, it's on all across all platforms. The link, all you have to do is click it, give like three pieces of inf- in, information. My goodness. And uh, you're in. And I want to really especially thank Paul. I mean, he's... The uh, he's probably put in a hundred plus hours on this bike. Yeah. He's still working on it, working late every day. Uh, you know, he donated a bunch of parts, including the ODC suspension and his own parts. He's doing like three or four one-off things for the bike, including this bitchin' like uh, a gauge. It's going to have like the tack and speedo, uh, and it won't block the main head unit for GPS and whatnot on the Harley. So this is the first time he's doing that. So three or four of the parts potentially could be parts that are going to be a part of his catalog that will be first on this bike. And That's so, cool. uh, I mean, the bike's going to hopefully have about 150 horsepower. I mean, the turbo is a one-off turbo by Trask, 10000 in in uh, carbon fiber by Hoffman, seven eight $8,000 paint job. Paul's parts and labor is probably another thirty 
forty thousand. I mean, Paul is such a grand. Paul is such a nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. He really is, man. I would like to have a bike built by Paul. You know, that's. Well, <laughs> yeah. Such... Who wouldn't? It's Paul but, Yaffe. But Hello. wait, um, ima- yeah. imagine this though. Imagine, um, like, talk about the the dream, the dream trip. Like, because most people's first trip to Sturgis is their or their trip to Sturgis is their first trip to Sturgis. Most people only get to do Sturgis one time ever. You know what I mean? There's there's a few crazies like us that are every year, every year, every year. It's like going to church, but most people they save up for. 10 years to go that one time imagine being that person that's waiting to go and hears about this contest and puts their chips in man and gets the the all-out rock star treatment to sturgis going on one of the baddest custom bikes like hitting everything going to lunch with you adam like that's that's uh, the dream right there oh i forgot one thing uh we are we are paying for the first second place winners travel as well up to a certain amount and I got Paul at the last live video I did at his place last week to agree to a ride. Now, it may not be in Sturgis because he's going to be manning his booth. But if not in Sturgis uh, at Arizona Bike Week, he committed. And uh, I'm sure if Adam's there uh, at Arizona Bike Week, which he usually is, I can get him on the ride. So how cool would it be? Yeah, that's now, I, awesome. I, 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 I'm, I'm not the draw. I'll be there just because I get to hang out with Adam and Paul in the winter. But me, Adam, Paul, bike winner. Going for a ride, Arizona Bike Week, another bonus. Uh, so I mean, it's 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 going to be incredible. I actually got a chance to spend some time with the second, actually the first and second place winner last year in Sturgis, and you know this just to seeing their smile on their face when they're trying on their Night Rider jewelry and and uh, you know staying and we decorate the cab and we stock it with food and drinks. You know we try to go the extra mile to make it a, a special experience. And uh, again, it's just one more way for us to give back. Uh, as, as well as our partners, and I can't thank our partners enough for uh, for contributing and donating. Uh, it means a lot to me that they're willing to do that. And there's going to be three winners. Like I said, we're mm-hmm. going to be showcasing the bike at Paul's place, probably over Deadwood Custom Cycles, where he'll be set up, and then we'll have it over at our booth as well for at least a day. So you'll be able you'll be able to actually see it and uh, experience it um, uh, for 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 yourself if you want to check it out at one of the two locations as well. So. Right on. So speaking of uh, speaking of free drinks, there's oh a, there's, yes, this is so cool. <laughs> there's another <laughs> thing that we're all involved here pretty soon, and we actually have a quick clip I'm going to play, and then we'll come back and talk about this, and and we'll cut you guys loose for the night. Hey man, this is Crystal Cycle Source Magazine, and I want to tell you guys the High Seas Rally is back for 2022, and it's badder than ever before. The gang's all going to be there. We got more parties, more music, and more good times than ever. And uh, you're going to be fired up, too, because this time, the drink's on us. Go to highseasrally.com today. Get in on the action. We're setting sail 2022. So the good people with High Seas Rally have decided not to push the issue while everybody's still going back and forth on mask, no mask, travel, no no travel, test, no test. They decided to, uh, to put their event off until 22. And um, in celebration of that, everyone's getting upgraded in their drink package. But you guys are all coming on this thing, too. We're all involved in this. This is literally going to be a rally on a cruise ship. We're actually giving away a trip. Uh, we were going to start. I think we're going we're gonna to announce it uh, on lo- Facebook Live in Sturgis at our booth. Lionel's going to make an announcement. But, yeah, we're, we're doing a big package, uh, giveaway package, uh, uh, airfare, free cruise uh for two i think some other goodies as well and then we're giving away a fat scooter on the on the uh trip as well as i forgot to mention that's part of our contest also a fat scooter but yeah so we're super excited i'm going my crew's going tank our mascot adam's going adam's gonna be there paul's going in fact we're we're, going you guys are going everyone (laughs) this is going to be really a big industry party i know a lot of people in the motorcycle industry are going so uh if you want to hang out with people uh, that are that are part of this industry, uh, this is this is going to be like the place to be uh, next year for this cruise. I'm excited. It, it really is because I think, I mean, I wasn't fortunate enough to attend the High Seas Rally before, but they've really stood, stepped it up, and they're doing everything they can to bring motorcycles to the ship. They're yeah. they have a half a dozen or more now. I think maybe up to ten custom motorcycle builders that are all going to have at least one bike on display. 
Um, Chris and our team are going to be doing Grease and Gears garage segments where we teach people maybe how to fabricate, fabricate handlebars or do basic maintenance. We're going to have some DIY segments and we're going to be doing mini bike races, Adam, that you're going to have to get in on um, <laughs> at the pre-party and at some of the islands. Um, they're letting us bring a fleet of mini bikes on board with us. They, Listen, I'm just going to tell you. Ship, I'm but... just going to tell you right off the bat. So we we have like eight of them that we travel with. There's one that has the number plate 007. It is completely unrestricted, and it's it's wild as hell. We can't figure out why this bike is so much faster than the rest of them. They all have the same motor in them. It's crazy. Are they, are they those Pullmans? They're the uh, what are they called? Mini, They're Predator mini motos 212 or, motors. Yeah, we we changed all the motors, of course. Yeah. <laughs> They all have different motors. Too cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know if of, a, of an open bar with free drinks and running mini bikes really mixes, but uh, sounds like a good but, time. <laughs> absolutely, Ari. <laughs> that's that's one hundred percent. We're gonna have a uh, pina colada in one hand and the throttle in the other. How about that? <laughs> absolutely. I know. I'm looking forward to it. Adam, are you are you ready to to go? I am. I think it's going to be a. Uh, I think it's going to be a great event. I'm. I'm really looking forward to it myself. I think that. Uh, I think I, you know. I've never done it before, so this is all new for me, right? This is this is something different. Same here. But I, I'm. I'm excited for it. This is actually my first cruise I've ever taken. So us too. I'm, so we'll no. be we'll be crew first timers together. That'll be great. Yep. And they, they actually uh, created a code uh, for a, a private group for me. Uh, the Americans. And uh, for every person that gets a cabin, uh, for every cabin rental under the Americans, they are going to give away, or they're going to give they're going to give two hundred dollars towards buying tickets for free veterans. So we're going to be sending free veterans oh, right. on this cruise. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Where can so people I, find that information, Adam? Is it on your website or? Yeah, you can find it on my website or go to High Seas Rally's website and uh, just put in when you register, just log in the Americans, and it will give me a credit to bring veterans on the cruise for free so i'm super excited about that. that's awesome you know that that's one of the best things about <clears throat> the people from the high seas rally is like you know they give away a custom motorcycle and this year it's our friend xavier from uh from providence cycle works who built the bike for them but the whole thing goes towards um the dialysis fund and the dialysis fund brings an entire dialysis unit with them so that they can bring dialysis dialysis patients and actually have them you know experience a trip because m most people that have to have regular dialysis can't do anything like this because they can't be that far away from from the center you know and, sure. and they're using all of the funds that are generated in this in this you know idea of getting a custom motorcycle winning the custom motorcycle it all goes towards bringing dialysis patients on the ship too so they're they're just they're they're so giving in in all the stuff that they do it's charitable from top to bottom what do you doing it right that bike is awesome i saw that arizona bike week <clears> last year i was going to buy a ticket where, where do you I personally want to do it uh, myself, but where do you get those tickets, by the way? Well, actually, everybody who registers, who is a rally goer, a cruise goer, is automatically registered yep. to win that motorcycle. Um, so, so you have to be on the cruise ship to win it. But I'll tell you, he went way above and beyond on that. He did yep. a phenomenal, phenomenal job on that motorcycle, and somebody's going to be very lucky to take that home. Well, being an experienced cruiser, uh, I can tell you, Make sure that you uh, diet before you go. I know that Adam has lost a bunch of weight, and I'm trying to catch up to him because he's a lot skinnier and better looking than me. But anyway, uh, when you go on this cruise, it's all about overeating, and that's all they do is they feed you. You overeat, you overdrink, and you oversleep, which is not a bad thing. But uh, right. be Amen. prepared. Sleep? In What's that? Well, that's true. We'll be busy on this trip, but uh, but it, I always gain about five pounds because. I, 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 as Adam knows, I like to eat and overindulge, but, but the cruise is even more so because they, uh, they just put all this food in front of you and, uh, there's way too many choices, but I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a, when they approached us, it, it was a no brainer to get involved and promote it. And, and we're super excited to be, be a part of it and to see everybody that's going to, going to be on it. It's just going to be a big party and a lot of fun. So Adam, you are you are nonstop with the adventures. Tell everybody where they can keep up with you. Um, we have a couple of your sites up here, your YouTube page, and and uh, maybe where you're going to be next, where people might be able to run into you. So I uh, you, yeah, just Adam Sandoval on YouTube, like you see on the screen right now. Um, 
Adam Sandoval, Scoot in America on Facebook, and uh, just Adam Sandoval dot official on Instagram. Um, those are my pages. I upload daily. I try to do about four videos a week. Um, sometimes I can squeeze out a few more, like last week. But um, you know, I'm always on adventures. So I uh, right now I am doing some uh, dual sport riding. I'm headed out uh, on a KTM and a Kawasaki and doing some adventure riding. From there, I go to uh, do Cocoa Beach in Florida. From Cocoa Beach in Florida, I am in Colorado. I'll be running across Colorado, and then from there, I'll be up in Sturgis. So that's my next uh, two and a half weeks. Right on. <laughs> oh my goodness, you get around, young man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like I like to travel, and I, I like to share really cool spots and, and experiences with people. Yeah, buddy, and you, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people, a lot of people showed up in the parking lots of, of those those stops on the chase specifically to catch up with you because you introduced them to all of this. You know, they were they were watching you and are like, okay, we look, it's right down the road. We got to go check it out. Yeah, it's I love that. <laughs> That's probably one of my favorite things is to share cool things with people and then them come up and say, hey, you know, I went on this ride because you shared it in a video and you were right. It was amazing. Um, or, you know, this, this thing here with the, with the chase is, is new for me too. And so I think hopefully my, my excitement translated over to camera because it genuinely was something that really, uh, stole my heart, man. It took my breath away for a week and, and it, it was nice. I just, it was just so cool. Right on. That's awesome. So Ari, com. um, oops, I got the wrong screen up. Look at that. I'm fired today. You're fired lawtigers.com but you guys are really turning into uh to content providers too like you're you you can see the excitement that you guys have in all of this in in the stuff that you bring out so tell everybody where they can keep up with everything that law tigers is involved in because i imagine with sturgis you got to have like 10 of those law tiger trucks out there yeah we stay pretty busy i got to give a shout out to lionel gammon my vp of field operations he runs he's he's my uh my lieutenant, he runs our ground game along with, you know, four regional directors and you know, over 30 marketing managers. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, we're in we're in over 30 states and growing. You can you can catch us online uh, at Law Tigers Facebook or LawTigers.com. Uh, yeah, I never thought we'd be in the content game, but nowadays that's really what it's all about. And so, uh, you know, whether it's doing Facebook Lives, which I do and Lionel does, our managers do them on their local Facebook pages or uh you know producing videos which my team andreas does here uh whether you know about our lawyers and the service they provide or our local communities you know for us it's just about staying top of mind and and also educating riders on all the great things that go on event wise uh showcasing our shop and industry partners uh you know we we, we like doing this it's it's something that we're passionate about and and again we, we're here if someone needs us if they're ever in an accident motorcycle accident and our attorneys, local attorneys, uh, do a great job of representing uh, fellow min- injured motorcycle riders. But in the meantime, we want to uh, pay it forward, do good, and, and really help out our, our community. So, uh, yeah, just keep, you'll, you'll, if you ever see a marketing manager in an event, go up and say hello. They got some cool swag they can give you. Make sure you call your insurance company to uh, get proper insurance. In fact, Adam and I were talking about that uninsured and underinsured motorists, maximize mm. that. You can't afford not to have it if you're in an accident, and uh, just be be vigilant and uh, and ride safe. We don't want to see anyone get hurt, obviously. All right, well, listen. We want to thank both of you guys for taking some time and coming on with us tonight, and uh, helping us helping us relive a little bit of the chase. Looking forward to next year. Excellent. Thank that. you so much. All Thanks, right, guys. guys. You be safe. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye bye. All right. So, so real quick, I have to give a shameless plug because um, one oh. man asked if there were going to be any bands on the ship. And yes, there are going to be bands. I know Molly Hatchet is playing. And my favorite band, the Black Smoke Sinners, who Christopher just happens to play bass for, is going to be playing a couple nights on the cruise ship as well. So um, it's going to be a killer, killer week on on the High Seas Rally. And we hope to see some of you there. The Americans for Adam Sandoval, let's help get some veterans there. I know if you can't remember that one and you use CycleSource as a promo code, I think you get $100 off your um, your travel. So they're giving you some great reasons to go. And again, all the drinks, it's all inclusive, are on them. You're pretty excited about the drinks, huh? Well, 
I mean, I can have virgin pina Son coladas of a biscuit and eater. virgin strawberries. <laughs> Hey. Oh, real quick. Right. I no, need to no, give no. a shout out. You, Wait a minute. I need to give one more quick. shout out. You already got you real quick. One more shout out. Go ahead. We have a new team member. Yes. At Cycle Source, um, Robin Cole, who jumped in last minute and came on as our production assistant for the cross country motorcycle chase. And we absolutely could not have done it without her. Um, and everybody, Law Tigers, Robin, Missy, Marge. Um, the entire volunteer staff for the chase was outstanding, but Robin, you knocked it out of the park this Booyah! week, and hopefully we didn't scare you off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Hey, listen, you're watching Shop Talk, coming to you live through the courtesy of the Dennis Kirk Motorcycle Studio. We're going to take a quick two minutes to pay some love to our sponsors. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to wrap this thing up. Stick around. All Tigers did it again with three amazing prize packages worth more than $120,000. It's Stylin' in Sturgis. The third place prize is worth more than $10,000. The Law Tigers are bringing you the 81st annual Sturgis Motorcycle Rally to you with a full bagger sound system from Rockford Fosgate, a custom 1911 from Magnum Research, and a fatty HD from Fat Scooter. Sign up now at ltsturgis.com for your chance to win the biggest giveaway in Sturgis history. Everything we do at the track shapes what we build for the street and the dirt. You can see how bad these guys want it. The race to the line. For us, racing is not for the trophies or the glory. We compete because it makes everything we do faster, more durable, and tested to a higher standard. For SNS, racing is the ultimate in proven performance, and we've been proving it since 1958. from RKB and you're watching Shop Talk. Hi, I'm Tom. I'm with Banks Brothers Motorcycles. One of the things I want to show you today is our new improved engine puller. With changes to this machine has been in the arms and in the hands. We put hind joints in the hand to allow rotation of the engine, which makes it easier to get it in and out of the frame. With the angle change, we have equal clamping pressure on them. And over here, we have what's called the posi lock which allows this to be locked in place and the engine can't swing from side to side. And we're going to show you just how easy it is to pull the motor out of the bike right now. Well, George is actually going to come in, make contact with the cylinders, tighten it down, and will pull it out of there. You lift it up, rotate it, and bring the assembly out of the frame. You see the motor starting to move and it centers itself. This allows no side play once the motor's in place and it keeps it safe, it can't fall out, Visit BanksBrothersMotorcycles.com to order your bank slip. Okay, welcome back to the Dennis Kirk Studio. Appreciate you guys holding on with us. Thanks to all our sponsors for making this happen. A um, couple of things before we cut you guys loose tonight. I want to remind you about the Charlie Brechtel um, benefit raffle, the, the Golden Chopper that was going to be featured in Charlie's last feature film. $20 a ticket, 100 tickets, or $100 for six tickets. Uh, all of the, the proceeds from this go directly to the Sturgis Motorcycle Museum and Hall of Fame in Charlie's honor. Charlie was taken from us before he could complete that film. And the, uh, the people that were all involved with the motorcycle decided that this was the best way to honor his memory. So please go check that out. We'll have it with us in Sturgis and at many of the shows throughout the week. <clears throat> you we get have, to ride it? No, we don't get to ride it. Settle down now. Settle down. Do we get to win it? No, we do. we can't win it either. If we did Why win not? it, if we did win it, we'd give it back to the museum and it could live there, also Fine. in Charlie's memory. So yeah, it's twenty bucks. Buy a ticket. It's for a good cause. It's to keep Charlie's Charlie's memory alive in in so many ways, and to keep 
the history of motorcycling going. You know, we want that history to be there for years and years to come. Plus, it uh, it also puts a chopper guy in the Sturgis Hall of Fame and Museum, and that's that's awesome. <laughs> All right, so hey, we got some. Uh, we had two events this weekend, and uh, one of them happened over in Pennsylvania at Gettysburg Bike Week. Um, let me see if I can pull up some pictures here because we want to give some props out to our crew that was out there. Yeah, absolutely. Major kudos to uh, mailman Kevin O'Brien, his amazing right. wife Cheryl O'Brien, Jack who's Schitt. not in that picture. Um, Jack Sh- Tim Jalay of Jive Turkey Racing, who handled our mini bike races for us, you guys did an outstanding job, outstanding job, and we cannot thank you enough for spending your weekend over at Gettysburg Bike Week with those fine folks over there. Mark, Mark for going out. Oh yes, Mark. I'm yep. sorry. Well, and Mark's look. downstairs in the chair. I can just go down and thank and him. Dude, after. look at that. That is a beautiful machine right there. So. I hope we got pictures of this bike. I hope somebody took pictures or at least got me a phone number. Cause I'm all yeah, well, I have all the sheets in my in my hot little hands. So yeah, um, great tradition for us, and uh, you know because we were on the chase and and going to be having a hard time getting back on time. Oh my God, Sloan was racing a mini bike because we were having a hard time getting back. Those guys stepped in. I believe we had six staff members that were out in Gettysburg making sure that event went off without a hitch, and it mostly did. It did. It was awesome. <laughs> they were incredible. They really were. Like, yep. they, they stepped up. Mailman and Cheryl are going to be out with, a, without, out with us in Sturgis. Um, hopefully Cheryl's ankle is better. She sprained it pretty good right before the event, but she still showed up and did the work. Yep. Yeah, and, and believe it or not, after all these years, um, having people that you can count on that are going to go there and take care of things this way and do the right thing, and even under the stress and pressures of an event like this, to uh, to to bring it home and be respectful and you know and do the right thing in the name of your business. That's Rich said. Mark is quiet tonight. Let's go. Does back. he have anything to say? Let's cut to Mark. Let's cut to Mark. <clears throat> so, Mark, what do you think about uh, what do you think about the chase coverage so far? It sucked. No. <laughs> you can't answer for them. I'm just Jeez. channeling my inner mark. All right, so there's there's so much more for us to get to, man, but um, we're going to cut you guys loose because actually we've had our 90 minutes and we're going to reload this shit and get ready for the makeup show for Torque. So if you're looking for more motorcycle entertainment from uh, 9 o'clock tonight on, we're going to be live with Torque with... Jason Holman and John O'Brien. Yes, cocaine. cocaine. There is a Black Hills Boogie Pimp and Ho night. It is Thursday night. Come with your best disco. (laughs) Get down. Bring it on. Get up that you have. Hello from Florida, the Dale and Cat Show. Right on. So, yeah, man, uh, appreciate you guys watching tonight. Uh, As always, it's great that you let us into your headspace and into your your living rooms and um as long as you keep watching it we'll keep doing it and until next week same chopper time no yes it's gonna be actually on sunday today's not sunday well that's why it's gonna be the same chopper time we're gonna do it the same chopper time next week same chopper channel and jason hallman and john (laughs) o'brien will see you in about 40 minutes with torque performance television so Go get a snack and come on back. Wait a minute. I got to do Mark's part. So we usually go same chopper time. Same chopper channel. Bye, Felicia. (laughs) (laughs) All right, man. See ya.